So I will start with a basic example illustrating what a man con UR sub man conjecture is and uh, what is the role played by periodic L function in it. So probably for most people, the main interest is about the UR sub man conjecture. But I put the periodic L function in front only because that's uh, so far what I have done is more related on the periodic L function. Okay, so. Uh, many interesting problems in number theory is about unveiling the relation between the special values of L functions and a certain arithmetic object. So let's see a basic example. So let P be an odd prime, and zeta P be the primitive piece root of unity. And we consider the field Q joint, the rational number joint with the zeta P. And we consider its maximal abelian unramified extension. Then the Galois group is going to be isomorphic to the ideal class group of the field Q joint with delta P. And we have the class number formula, which says that the size of this class group is equal to the product of some invariance of this number field times a product of Dirichlet L values. And uh, we see that, uh, so here the omega is the teach Muller character. So it's from z modulo p cross to the p minus 1 through subunity, defined as omega a modulo p is, uh, is congruent to a. And uh, we see there is a product on the right-hand side. So that makes us think that uh, maybe we should also decompose the left-hand side. And that's indeed the case. So because there is a Galois group isomorphic to z modulo p cross here, it naturally acts on the class group so we can consider the omega i's eigenspace. And if we consider only the odd i's, we get this uh, equality. So the product of the uh, omega i's eigenspace is equal to a simple factor times the Dirichlet L values. So I moved 1 to 0 by using the functional uh, equation. And uh, if, I further if I further only consider the p part, and it exclude the i equals 1, then I get an exact equality of two products. So the product of the omega i taken space of the class group equals the product of the L values. And uh, so we see the equality of two products. One naturally wonders whether actually there are equality for each pair. And uh, that's indeed the case. So the class number formula tells us that the products, the two products are equal. Then the refined herbrand ribe theorem tells us that for the p part, actually each pair is equal. So that's the story for the field Q joint with zeta p. So it's instead of consider only join the roots of p roots of unity, one can also consider the tower of cyclotomic extensions. That is to say, we consider the field I joined with all the p power roots of unity. I consider this cyclotomic tower. So then I will have a richer structure <coughs> here. So on each layer, I consider the maximal unramified abelian p extension. So I, then I will be interested in the x infinity here, the class group at the top. So uh, still, it's going to have the action of the bottom group here, and I can decompose it into eigenspace, omega i eigenspace. And in addition to this action, I have another action of the Galois group zp here. So actually, the omega infinity omega i is a module over the group algebra of zp double bracket zp, which is isomorphic to zp double bracket t. And usually, this algebra is called the Iwasawa algebra. So the so the it's so this module here is often the Iwasawa module over the Iwasawa algebra, and we know it is finitely generated and torsion. So we can define the characteristic ideal of this Iwasawa module. And this is exactly the analog of the, cl the class group there. It measures how big the module is. And uh, so next is to what it's equal to. So what's the analog of the L values there? And uh, the answer is going to be the kubota leopold periodic L function. So this is an element inside the Iwasawa algebra. And you can characterize it by its interpolation property, so it's evaluate at these points, it's going to give you the L values, Dirichlet L values, with the factor at P being removed. And so 
uh, I think that there are two ways to think of a periodic L function. One way is to think that it's as a periodic analytic function interpolating uh, spatial L values. The other way <coughs> to think that it just as an avatar uh, of a collection of modulo uh, congruences of L values modulo powers of P. So in, in this case, the existence of this periodic L function is more or less equivalent to the, we have the Coomer's congruences for spatial L values. And so we can conjecture, so the conjecture, you have this equality, so the character side deal is generated by this periodic L function. And this is the so-called iwasawa man conjecture, and now it's a theorem of major wiles. And from this result, you can actually deduce the of, uh, previously mentioned uh, herbrand ribbon theorem. So this, uh, to summarize here, so the iwasawa man con conjecture can be viewed as a generalized class number formula and the periodic L function is the object appearing on the analytic side. And actually, this picture generalizes. You can formulate <coughs> similar theorems or theorem conjectures for elliptic curves or more general automorphic Galois representations. So in order to formulate the USL main conjecture for a periodic Galois representation, the periodic L function needs to be constructed. Uh, the existence of this con uh, such periodic L function has already been conjectured by Coates and Perenreau. So I hope this gives us a motivation to consider the problem of constructing periodic L functions for certain maybe automorphic Galois representations. And uh, what I did in my thesis is to construct the periodic L function for a specific kind of uh, automorphic representation. So namely the irreducible caspital automorphic representations for symplectic, symplectic groups over Q and with pi infinity isomorphic to a holomorphic discrete series. So probably there's much terminology in this sentence, but uh, it doesn't really matter if you have not yet seen it before. So, uh, or if you more in more classical language, you can think of it just as a Ziegel modular form of degree <coughs> n. So it's a uh, multivariable holomorphic function satisfying certain nice transformation property. Then one may, then you can attach to this representation. You can you have the L function, and you have the anal analytic properties for L functions, you also have algebraic re results for the spatial L values, then you can consider constructing a periodic L function interpolating these spatial L values. Uh, with chi varying among Dirichlet characters with the conductor being a power of P, and uh, the K will vary among critical points for this L function. And uh, even more, you can vary pi uh, in a Hida family, so which is just a a collection of uh, automorphic representations which vary uh, periodic analytically in a nice sense. So my result is that uh, if pi is ordinary, then there exists a one variable periodic L function for this pi. And uh, if I'm given an n variable Hida eigenfamily, then I can construct an n plus one variable periodic <coughs> L function for the Hida family. So I put the quotation mark here because I don't have enough space to really write down all the interpolation results here to really characterize the periodic L function. But I only want to mention one thing quickly that. Uh, N? Yes, the same. And so uh, for Hida family, so for <coughs> SP2N, the Hida family has N variables. So uh, I only want to m quickly mention one thing about the interpolation result is about the um, uh, factor at P. So we know in order to interpolate periodic R function, we need to do some modification at P. So in my construction, the the finally after computation, re the outcome result, the factor at P, actually uh, does agree with the conjecture of Coates and Perenreau. So the construction relies on the doubling method developed by Garrett, Fiatesky, Shapiro, Rallis, and Shimura. Uh, which which uh, representation is doable for your L function? Uh, standard, standard one. And uh, so it roughly says this. So if you consider the Diego Eisenstein series on the double-sized group, i.e. the SP4N, and you restrict it and pair it with the pair of the Diego modular forms 
uh, in, in the representation, you almost will get the L function there. So this equality tells us we can reduce the study of the L function to the study of the Ziego Eisenstein series. And so this method has already been used to study the algebraicity and the periodic properties of L values by many people. Just a list a few here. And uh, so our construction involves mainly, uh, I think, three steps. So the first one is to select nice sections at the P and the infinity for the Ziego Eisenstein series so that I can have the desired periodic congruences and also to make sure that the local data integrals are non-vanishing, especially the Archimedean one. And uh, so in, our, in the construction of periodic L functions, when we uh, apply this kind of in integral representation, actually we need to be very explicit. We need to pick an explicit section from the degenerate principal series and uh, to do the, all the computations and uh, to see the wanted uh, periodic congruences. And the second step is to some study the st algebraic structure of mass Shimura differential operators. The reason is that in order to uh, define the section I want at the Archimedean place, I need to use these operators. Because I want to study some algebraic and periodic properties, so I want a nice algebraic structure for these operators. And this is, done, this is done by constructing certain nice automorphic sheaves over Ziegel varieties. And uh, the final step is that I need to compute the zeta integrals at P. And uh, to I, do, I have an explicit section, and I do all the computation, and I get a factor, and compare to the conjecture by Coase and Panryu, and see they do match each other. So after normalizing this periodic L function, then it's going to be the object on the analytic side of the Iwasawa greenberg man conjecture for the family of Galois representations associated to the Hida family C. So um, roughly it's written as, so I predict that the characteristic ideal of this Pontryagin dual of the Selmer group is generated by the periodic L function. So I don't ha have enough space here actually to rigorously define this uh, Selmer group here. So I will just uh, give a very rough description of what the conjecture should predict. OK, so then there's actually a common strategy for attempting to prove one divisibility in the aforementioned theorems and conjectures, i.e. the divisibility that uh, the analytic side divides the arithmetic side. So the, the idea is to produce elements in Selmer groups by utilizing congruences between Eisenstein series and the uh, cast forms. So this idea originates from Ribet's proof of the converse of Herbrand's theorem. And uh, it's further developed into a very general machinery by Wiles, Sorbonne, and Shea. So the key input for rounding this Eisenstein congruence machinery is to have a family of Klingon Eisenstein series satisfying the following two properties. So the first is that the degenerate terms in its Fourier coefficient, Fourier expansion, are given by the periodic L function. And the second is the degenerate terms are co-prime to the non-degenerate terms. So that's, this will going to be reduced to some modular P non-vanishing results. So in the previously mentioned case, so after I, I constructed, I also constructed the Klingon Eisenstein family, satisfying this first property, still by using the doubling method. And now I am interested in computing the corresponding non-degenerate Fourier coefficients and finding how far it can go in the very general setting, and as well as see if there are some special cases for which the second property can be actually verified. So in general, the non-degenerate non Fourier coefficients will looks like take this form. So it's the Peters inner product of the Ziegel modular form with the theta lift from the orthogonal group of On plus 1 times a Ziegel Eisenstein series. 
So when n equals one, this is just the usual uh, ranking Salberg L function. But for general n, so far I have no idea whether this is related to certain L functions or it fits into some general framework of integral representations of L functions or mm, L values. <coughs> Maybe someone in the audience have some ideas on it, and uh, I would really like to learn more on this. And so this is a picture for the uh, symplectic side. Uh, so it looks pretty much like uh, one side of the seesaw diagram. So you can also go to the other side. Consider this problem on the other side, you go to the orthogonal side. Then you have the theta lift of the Ziegler modular form here, and uh, you, ha you have to integrate this over one, fact uh, one factor down here. And so right now I'm doing the computation. So, so first I want to understand what this is, to at least to get some uh, heuristic intuition why this is going to be non-vanishing or modulo p non-vanishing. And uh, second is to do some really maybe explicit and long computation to relate the change of indices of the Fourier coefficients to translation by elements in the orthogonal group for this Schratz function. So then I will see some, maybe some distributions here. And uh, that's one that I want to probably consider saying something about this function that is defined by integrate this uh, theta lift along the factor here to see whether there are some reason to, uh, to see the non-vanishing for this, this uh, function here. So, and that's it, and thank you.